Hello and welcome to the Engage Brain Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by BrainSonic. BrainSonic measures the electrical activity of your brain, allowing you to change your behavior based on your brain's activity. Paired with the BrainSonic smartphone app, you'll be able to decrease stress, changing not only your emotional state, but over time, your emotional traits, and increase your attention, helping you to remember and accomplish more. Just make sure you hold still while using our headset so you don't introduce any eye, muscle, or heart-related artifacts in the signal running our patented algorithm that extracts information from our eight channels of electrodes. Use the promo code ENGAGED to receive 10% off your first headset. Few experiences are as immersive as listening to music. You can listen to music and get completely lost in time and space as it washes over your body. At the same time, music can transport you back through time and space to a previous experience and relive it as if it were the present. Today I speak with Brandon Valentine about the power of music and music's effects on the brain. I'm here with Brandon Valentine. Trying to uh, get the name right, uh, brain uh, that's a better way to say it. And we're talking about music in the brain. Uh, yes. And I wanted to know what got you interested in music and uh, in music in the brain. Um, I mean, so you know, we've been talking. I mean, I do some DJing stuff now, but I guess as I've grown up, I think music has probably been the biggest, I guess I would say, sanctuary for me in my life. I mean, going just going through things that I've dealt with and just not only for sports, I mean, I've played sports my whole life, so I think as I got older, it becomes more influential, like pumping up for my team and getting ready for games, and I just, as I've gotten older, and I've t- took psychology last year in high school, and now again with you this this term, mm-hmm. and last semester, I think um, I've continued to realize that there's much more going on with music than I understood, and that it's clearly from what I've started, and the research I've started looking into, that there's much more that other people are interested to, and so I think it's definitely a very interesting thing because from what I'm seeing that they're just starting to get to the get to the iceberg and from there trying to figure to find the tip of it it's just the beginning of I think there's a lot more to be found out and because I think it's one of it seems to be one of the most complex understandings of how it's going and being understood in our own brain yeah yeah and so what are some of the interesting findings that you found in your research so far um, so specifically actually the articles that I actually found for specifically in the last week when I was looking, probably one of the most interesting things to me, because I've had this experience myself, is so a woman at Wesleyan University, um, what's her name, uh, Psych Lu, um, she did a study on people who were were experiencing chills when listening to certain types of music, and that's something I've always, and I know a few other people that have, but not everybody, so she did it with about 230 people, they had them pick their favorite song, they listened to it, and so they examined a bunch of they think their heart rate, um, how much they were sweating, and their brain activity, and so they did. And so they had they chose it from ten people who have reported feeling chills, and ten that didn't. And so they basically just were trying to connect how some why other people feel it and whatnot. So I thought that was just very interesting because something I've experienced myself, and I was like, wow, someone's doing something like that. So, um, so that was probably one of the most interesting things that was especially recently because I this was kind of more after the base of my research. And then another article I found was in uh, New York Times. And it was about like the specific pathways they're starting to map that are finding, that are following how music is heard in the brain. And they were trying to differentiate through M- fMRI, which is mostly what they're mm-hmm. using to map this. Um, but so they're trying to find the different. I'm trying to find it. What it was saying. So like there was the. Um, it was through obviously the auditory cor- cortex, which is mm-hmm. in the uh, temporal lobe. So so they're through there, and they they found that it went through. There was one pathway that went through was music, and then once through there, there was difference between music with songs, which is more related to under, like the part of our brain that understands words. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so the other part that just is more like the musical sounds and whatnot. And so that those are probably two most interesting. I'm trying to think if there's something I'm forgetting. But that was basically the gist of this one. Um, yeah, but they, and they themselves were just talking about it's something that it's they're really starting with, especially with technology, that it's something that they're much able to map now as before was something we knew it was doing something, we didn't really know what, and still, even with the technology, it's still a little unsure of what it's specifically doing, but it's clearly having a big impact on people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the so the, going back to that first article you were mentioning about the chills while listening to the music, is that called like... Uh, ASRM or something like auditory stimuli I, I response that sounds mechanism or something like that. I, I don't think I saw I I 
I almost swear that I came across that, not, maybe not in this article, but it sounds very familiar um, from what I've seen in other research. Yeah, now I'm live Googling, which I know is terrible for <laughs> audio. Yeah, autonomous sensory meridian response uh, is the, uh, like, goosebumps or the, uh, what gives us chills. Uh, and from, to at least from what I'm remembering correctly, that that is not as much of a necessary trait for us anymore because mm -hmm. we've kind of evolved to the point that we're not, it's you really, it was before about being scared of for being yeah. in danger, so mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting how that's adapted now that it's related to something like this when it's triggering something that's so emotional and mm -hmm. enjoying that it triggers that. So it's, I think that, that, was, that would probably stood out to me. I was like, wow, that's that was really cool. So. Yeah, it kind of reminds me like when a cat's, the hair on the back oh, of a cat sticks, yeah, sticks up, like that's where I feel like I get it uh, yeah. the most. Uh, and But then going to the second one, uh, the fMRI in the brain, it's, it's so interesting, like playing people's uh, favorite music and seeing how it travels yeah, through the through brain. The brain. I, was, that, I thought that was very cool too, especially the, what they were talking about how the song I mean it makes sense that the songs with lyrics are going to trigger a different it's going to kind of split up and trigger different parts as well as like the, the melodies and the, the beats and whatnot so I, and I just I mean it's very especially I would love to see I mean I've seen some images but I'm uh, seeing it live just like how they're going through the process of scanning that and whatnot would be really cool so yeah and I think as they uh, are able to get uh, better spatial or not spatial temporal resolution in fMRIs we'll be able to kind of follow the reverberation of music through right. the brain yeah uh, like maybe someone I think one day will have like a dubstep study where they'll look at the response of the brain at the drop yeah <laughs> I yeah. think that would be fun to look at uh, but how about uh, do you think that there's anything that's confusing about studying music in the brain um, I mean one thing that I mean I think the BuzzFeed article I mean the, mm -hmm. what I was thinking about I mean but when we were ta uh, for our exam when we were going like the questions about like trying to translate to the public I think yeah. I think a lot, I mean, we talk about in class a lot, even with the debates, I think with just in neuroscience in general, because it's such a new field, it definitely is something that is hard to, in general to translate. And mm -hmm. I think with music, I don't I, I've been thinking about this myself, just trying to get ready to start writing about it. Music is such an influential thing, and everybody, I think, inherently knows that, and especially listening to it, you're just like, All right, this, is, this means a lot to me, but it's like, try and understand that from the very technical like with it chemistry biology and the neuroscience all that coming together is i think it's very hard to not dumb it down in a way but mm -hmm. to people who aren't in those fields and trying to look at it and say okay this is this is the parts of it and this is what's making it up it's more like this is music and this is what's doing i think it's it's easier for people in a more general sense especially with music to mm -hmm. to translate that right now especially with with the fmri studies and the brain imaging not being as available and as easily understood to people who aren't studying it yeah so i think that can get lost in translation like okay the this specific like this the, this lobe is affected by this and i think people will be like okay well i don't really know what that means right. so it's more like how what it's i think it's easier for people to understand it, music is it makes us feel certain emotions and there's a certain part of the brain that is associated with emotions and mm -hmm. this is what music is triggering i think that kind of logic is easier understood yeah. so i think for me trying to Attack, attack it from both sides can get mm -hmm. hard and that in a way could get confusing so just trying to keep it straight if I'm going parallel with it or just together so I think that can get tricky yeah and I think both of them are so confusing that you it feels like you have to be an expert in both right. to then bring them, yeah. them together and, and, you, and one thing I think I think it was in the, the New York Times article that I saw was that maybe it was in another part of my research it was that that we it's like what is music really and uh -huh. so that is even a whole other animal and it's trying to play that and you're thinking so I'm trying to even avoid that because yeah. in myself I was thinking about okay what is what does it really mean like I could make like I could make a beat and it's like alright is that that's music yeah. yep. and some or someone could be like well no it has to be like a song which well what's a song and so that yeah. that in and of itself could be its whole, whole its whole own topic so that's why it definitely I think can get confusing when you, people start even thinking about it on the next deeper level yep. and they're like okay so this is how it's affecting me but like what does that mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that's how it can get can get pretty confusing. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite artists is Jack White, and one of his favorite songs I can't remember. Um, maybe Holland Wolf, Holland Wolf, or, or someone um, like that. It's just a one string guitar uh, and him like kind of singing over it, just yeah. bending the string in different ways, uh, and that's his favorite song. Uh, but to like go from that to uh, like more complicated music, like the music that you create. Uh, how um, that w wide range uh, we all consider right. music and yeah. um, are attracted to that for different reasons in yeah. different ways. 
uh, about how, so what has been the, you mentioned your BuzzFeed article, uh, or BuzzFeed quiz, which is the power of music on BuzzFeed community. And uh, what has been the response uh, to that, um, your quiz? Um, I got, I, I didn't, I haven't, I don't think I talked to you a couple of days ago, and I forget how many exactly views it had. It had mm -hmm. a pretty decent amount of views, um, but from, it didn't have a ton of reactions, I think, but the, the okay. one or two that it did, I think, were pretty positive. I mean, I know I sent it on, I, I shared it on my Facebook and some Twitter, and I know... <laughs> That my like my my family people that saw it or friends yeah. where they they were like oh this is so great I mean I I think it's something everybody seemed pretty interested in. I don't think mm -hmm. they they really understood it but my I think my sister took it and she was like oh I got uh, this out of this or my friends are gonna look oh I got four or five five well, five yeah. out of five and, and I was like oh it was interesting they're like oh like let me know how the rest of it goes so I think it was nice to it was people got it was pretty positive feedback I mean I tried to make it as straightforward as I could mm -hmm. which. And I, I felt like I did a pretty good job of just trying to translate it. And just for me, even that was like the first step of like, all right, these are what ideas I have. This is what I found that's interesting. Let's yeah. see if other people will feel like it's interesting. And I think for the small, at least, feedback I've got that it's been it's been good. Yeah. And actually, one of the, th the questions I was on there was about exercising and the heartbeat. And that uh -huh. was that was probably also one of my favorite um, so one of the, from the favorite sources I found. Um, I, th I think it might have been out more, but about yeah, that, yeah, yeah. it was how your heartbeat if it if you find the right bpm or beats per minute of a song that can sync similarly to what your heartbeat is when you're working out that that can be an extremely yeah, like motivating factor of working mm -hmm. out and it's something it's something i had it's a, it's just another thing with it. it's, it's a lot of subconscious things that you once you materialize it it makes sense so i was like oh, okay like if i'm doing like I, there was a chart i think when you answer it it comes mm -hmm. up with a chart and I was like, okay, when I'm running and I'm listening to whatever 90 BPM, it's like or something. Not, I think my heart rate would be a little yeah, higher than that, but yeah. even like I think that's on maybe like one, yeah, 140. So something like close to that, or even up a little bit more. That's where like the trap music that like, gets into like that's where I like to listen to more, yeah, more upbeat. So then I was like, okay, this makes sense. When I'm listening to a song like this, or if I'm listening to a little slower song, and then I turn on one with the higher BPM, then I feel like I right, get more mm -hmm. motivated to get going, and I feel more my body's more in sync. So I thought that was very interesting. And then there was another article I found. I don't think it was in there, but it was. I, had, I know it's in my stories. It was about they did a study where they had uh, people who were just running. They just had people that they had trained runners, so some mm -hmm. of the cross country or track or something, and they had them on a treadmill. And then they had people who were they exercised, but not they weren't like running wasn't wasn't really their thing. So mm -hmm. then they had them listen to specific types of BPM um, when they were running and compared it to how the the heart rates of the runner, the train runners reacted and then showed that the train runners did not, the music didn't influence them at all. Like they ran the same way and because mm -hmm. they have their own rhythm that right. they're making in their head because they're not really listening to music when they're in competitions and whatnot. Yep. But the people who aren't, the music helped a lot and helped them perform at a higher level. And so that was, I thought that was pretty interesting that it's, it's something like that can stimulate you even if you're not as experience in what you're doing mm -hmm. something especially working out that it can make you perform at a higher level yeah I've seen that for beginning runners uh, that uh, using a different BPM um, music to like get the rhythm down with with which you're supposed to run because like surprisingly you get better running economy like you're more efficient if you're running at a faster pace which seems hard to do just on right. your own so being able to use the music yeah. to train yourself was super helpful uh, actually the one that I uh, was much most interested in from your quiz was are certain songs capable of triggering vivid memories mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the reason why was uh, that was conducted by a friend of mine uh, in graduate school uh, Amy Belfi uh, and uh, I thought it was uh, really funny to see uh, her work uh, being cited um, yeah no, and, I, and I just mentioned and I, I was going through my sources before I came here and I and I saw that too and I and I think that's just another part of this that it's just an inherent thing that we think mm -hmm. of it's like like that, I, I was trying to think of a song that, so, like, probably one of the most heard songs I could think of. So then I was like, looked up like baseball, like theme park, I mean, uh -huh. baseball park songs. So I was like, all right, YMC. I was like, oh, I would think most people have heard that song before. And it's funny, like, I, I myself played it and I thought about like being at a baseball game when I was a mm -hmm. little kid, like doing the hand yeah, motions right. of YMC. And, and it's in, in her in her work and it was it's crazy because they did these things and they would ask, they would talk, I think they presented specific situations, which is that's mm -hmm. the easiest way they could represent it but I mean I think that's one of those things it's like you just kind of people just kind of know again it's like you you know what this song comes on like I'm thinking about this time I was at my high school prom and yeah. I was where I was with my friends at the beach or whatnot and it's these things that you can really just take take yourself to and you pop up in your head and you just can just kind of relive it and yeah. I think that's me I was actually just in Miami for ultra music festival I don't know if anybody knows it's a big dance music festival and it's funny because I could think like I'll listen to a song that someone played now and I'll be like boom I'm thinking myself oh, looking yeah. at that stage like 
watching it and with the crowd and it's just, it takes me back to that place and it's in it on it and sometimes i'll hear the songs or like i'll watch the recap video of the festival and i'll get the chills and i'm like uh -huh. that's what i feel like when i'm there so it's it's crazy how the, everything connects back to it yeah yeah for me it's like smells where i can be like transported back in time mm -hmm. and then music where like a song will come on and i'll just be like thrown back in time yeah. to the place where I, I have some memory of that uh but how about going forward do you think that there's any new or developing areas of research that are interesting um, I think, I mean, I definitely think, I mean, this is just neuroscience in general, but especially even with the music, I think as the technology gets better, and I think that as the imaging becomes not only cheaper, but more accessible and easier for people to understand, I mean, I, I think, I mean, this is maybe a little bit farther through, but even like 50 years from now, when maybe like scanning is going to be like mobile or mm -hmm. some type of handheld device, that you're going to be able to hold up someone's brain, play music and be like, all right, this is what's happening. And I think, but no, I think even in the near future, I think that. They, I mean, music, as I, I think I alluded to it in the BuzzFeed uh, quiz, and I will talk about it in my paper that, I mean, the, the music therapy, has, I mean, that's a big part mm -hmm. of, especially with people, I think with dementia is a big part of it, and just yep. people who have had brain injuries, I think that has been proved to help a lot. I mean, I think that is probably one of the most interesting or most developing areas of it, because they have to, tr I think, as they learn more about the brains of specific disorders, they'll be able to tailor it more to what going on in those people's brains and trying to help them not fix it but help them build back on what the, something they've lost or mm -hmm. strengthen what they've that what's become weak and I think yep. that's probably one of the most significant things going forward with music and that, because I think I think what we're, we'll end up from being able to find out when whenever we find it or however we find out with what they can do with the mapping and whatnot and I think it's stuff that it's all will all be end up being stuff that we, we kind of know, but mm -hmm. we'll, have, we'll have the explanation for it. But I think the music therapy for, for me, I think that's will be important for not only the music industry and just being able to apply that to a more, I mean, a, med, a medicinal effect in a way, yeah, but just for that the, the medical community to being able to use something like music or the power of it and tailor it, like I said, mm -hmm. to, to specific needs of patients that that could be helpful for, yeah. And in Toronto last year, there was an Alzheimer's group that was uh, doing a I, iPods, iPods for uh, individuals with Alzheimer's disease, and so uh, they give them like a little iPod shuffle or uh, Nano or something like that with uh, specific music, like from their uh, teens and, and you know, everything, and like it just uh, increased their um, positive moods and like they felt so much better, and they'd like sit there and, and jam, uh, kind of like the I don't know mid two thousands Apple um, commercials where it was like the silhouettes okay. except old people in wheelchairs. Um, and how about so kind of as we're starting to wrap up here do you think that there's any one really important thing uh, that you want to mention about music in the brain um I think the, probably the most thing the biggest thing I'd probably wanna or my I guess my biggest goal in this is to try and I'm not I'm trying to think what makes, uh, that I would trans try and transfer to people or their display is that that music is I think it could potentially be one of the most powerful things for humans and, and I think we're just like I said before we're just getting to the beginning of what it means and I think it could really end up proving to be so much more powerful than we already think it is I mean I, I kind of I think I might have said it in one of my the, the, the quiz and I was like imagine our world without music mm -hmm. and that's just that is an extremely frightful idea yeah um, I mean, if I, I mean, I listen to music every day. I mean, the one, oh, I think this, yeah, people, they said people listen on music average four hours a day. I think. Wow. Um, or maybe maybe it wasn't. I know I saw it in, in, in whether we're personally with headphones on or like in our own space listening to it, it's probably playing someone else. When either maybe for example from in the dining hall eating is playing it somewhere in the background. Yeah. But, and I think it's something that I would like. To, I just want people. I think it's a good thing for people to understand. Like this, it's so much more. I think it, it deserves so much more credit than we give it. I mm -hmm. think that's what I was trying to bring to light with this, and that there is so much more going on that we know, and that I think, like we said, going forward, I think it will really become become much more obvious of what it's really doing for us and what it can do. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably a long way to a short yeah. answer. I could have said, yeah. but it, it's definitely it's it's definitely something to look out for going forward, especially with neuroscience uh, on the rise too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so now as as we wrap up here, uh, is there anything that you'd like to promote? Um, if you're interested in any of my music, I'm just doing some mashups right now. But um, follow me on SoundCloud, Bval, capital B V A L. Um, I'm trying to post some of my stuff there that got was left lost in my original account. But um, so that, that's probably about it. And I'm excited to me and my friends are going to be starting a record label hopefully at some point this summer. So I don't have any names for that, but. <laughs> Maybe I can 
put that about out there later on, but look forward to doing that. Um, it's probably it in that sense. All right, that's great. And then uh, the last thing is uh, any fad or product or thing that you think people should know about uh, going forward here? Um, I, I would say uh, probably uh, the self-driving cars. I think that's something that's definitely coming on the rise too. I think that will be an interesting step in with uh, technology that humans will take and it's kind of frightful to think of no, well, sometimes it's frightful for humans to be driving anyway, mm-hmm. but um, I think it's definitely something that will be that could definitely change the way not only that we travel, but just in efficiency and hopefully will help our environment too. Mm-hmm. And so that's something to look out for me. Yeah, well, thanks so much for coming in. Well, thank you to Brandon for coming in. I really appreciate uh, hearing uh, more about music. Uh, so this has been our second episode on uh, music in the brain, uh, and it was nice to hear two completely different accounts of uh, what music is doing and, and how it's uh, interacting on the brain. So definitely a complex and uh, interesting area of research in neuroscience. Uh, looking to the last three segments of the show, uh, we'll turn to uh, Jake's Jams, things that I've been interested in lately. Uh, this might be a, uh, come as a surprise to people, but uh, I'm going to plug BuzzFeed right now. Uh, so you've heard, if you've been listening and keeping up with the podcast, that I've uh, been talking about the students' uh, Midterm projects, uh, many of them uh, released BuzzFeed listicles, uh, some of them BuzzFeed quizzes, uh, and uh, while BuzzFeed isn't your number one source for science news or science information, uh, I think it's been really important to uh, look at how um, the students uh, can translate their scientific findings uh, into a public form that's uh, easily consumable and uh, something that people actually do use for uh, their public consumption of information. Uh, so it was uh, quite interesting for them to see how they tried to take a complex topic, maybe a boring topic to many people, and try to turn it into something interesting and uh, fun. Uh, so uh, I'm plugging BuzzFeed, and uh, in particular tied to this episode, Music in the Brain, I'm going to pu- plug an article called Why Music Gives You the Chills. Uh, we mentioned it uh, when I was talking with Brandon uh, about ASRM uh, and the kind of chills that sometime, uh, that you can feel sometimes when you listen to music. Uh, so I'll link that on the uh, in the comment section uh, so that you can check that out. Uh, I think it's uh, interesting to look at some of the videos that uh, the author has linked, uh, in particular uh, somebody I used to know and lightning crashes. I, I definitely uh, understood what they were talking about uh, and uh, felt uh, that chill experience of the ASRM uh, listening to those two songs. Uh, so uh, BuzzFeed uh, has been something I've been uh, interested in lately, in particular how we used it, uh, trying to communicate science in a fun and, and interesting and accurate uh, way. Uh, kind of a new segment or something I've tried just a few times. Uh, it has been the scholar notifications. Uh, and uh, again, with music and uh, the brain, uh, I'm going to plug another uh, colleague, uh, former colleague of mine. Uh, so uh, in well, last year I, I was at um, the Rotman Research Institute at Baycrest up in Toronto, and uh, well, f- another postdoc or a fellow po- postdoc, Valerie Salimnavor, uh, studies brain, the brain and music. And uh, she and her co-authors had uh, released an article last year in 2015, uh, Predictions in the Brain, How Musical Sounds Become Rewarding in Trends in Cognitive Neuroscience. It's a review article looking at how complex cognitive abilities and cortical processes integrate with fundamental subcortical reward and motivation systems in the brain that give rise to the m- music and pleasure. Uh, so this uh, work builds on their previous theoretical models uh, that emphasize the role of prediction in music appreciation by integrating these ideas with recent neuroscientific evidence. Uh, so a, a really fascinating article to see how um, music and the brain, uh, in particular how uh, the reward system in the brain is uh, integrated with uh, music and musical perception. Uh, So uh, in my scholar notifications or scholar updates, uh, check out uh, Valerie Salimnapour's article, Trends in Cognitive Neuroscience, uh, 2015, uh, Predictions in the Brain, How uh, Musical Sounds Become Rewarding. And uh, now turning to the uh, last uh, part of the show, the last segment, Uh, still since I've been uh, turning out these uh, podcasts so so fast, uh, there's no a reader mail or uh, Twitter tweets to look at. Uh, so uh, I'll just keep putting out my...